Hi everybody, once again it's Caroline with Roaming RV and today I'm going to talk about pet safety. Uh, you know many, there's a lot of RVers that love to travel with their pets, myself included. Um, my Shih Tzu Dexter always traveled with us in our fifth wheel until uh, we lost him uh, from old age. And I didn't like leaving him behind, boarding him in a kennel. I think that defeated the whole purpose. Um, you know, when we were away, I, I mean, why shouldn't he come with us, okay? And it wasn't always convenient to leave him with a family or friend or something. So having a pet like Dexter, my little Shih Tzu, um, travel with you, I think it's important. But it takes a little bit more time than just throwing in some food and a bed into the unit and um, think that everything's okay. I think you need to consider the pet safety aspect of your RV and how safe um, Dexter or your dog or cat is when, you're, when they're traveling. And you know, it's really easy for an animal to have an accident, either slipping or falling when the vehicle is in motion. And it can happen so quickly, there isn't even any time to react. So I think it's much safer, uh, even though they don't always like it, but it's much safer to have them in a secured crate or a pet carrier, if at all possible. Um, crates didn't work all that well for Dexter. Uh, when he was around five years old, all of a sudden he decided he hated it and kept scratching at the door continuously and wouldn't settle down. My solution was a harness that I attached to the seat and the dog, and he was much happier. He was very comfortable, but I knew that he couldn't, he wouldn't fall off if we, there was a sudden stop or anything. The other thing is there's travel bowls that are available that'll sit in the carrier so the animal can have water at any time. And that's another thing that's really important. And you don't want it spilling all over the place. So these uh, travel bowls are perfect. And what would happen if your pet got loose and you couldn't find him? You're in a campground and all of a sudden, for some reason, the dog gets loose and he's gone. You know, there's a few preventative measures that could, um, could be done that would mean the difference between having him return safely or not found at all. And some animals are escape artists. Uh, they get loose any chance they can, no matter what you do. Um, I used to have a dog. Um, he was a terrier poodle, and believe me, he escaped from the pound. He escaped, first of all, he escaped from my uh, yard. He uh, then was, I couldn't find him. He was picked up by the pound, and he escaped from the pound. Believe me, they weren't very happy with him, um, but he just could not be contained at all. So um, you have to be prepared for that in case your animal or your dog or cat is escape artist also. Have a collar on the dog with a tag that includes your name and your contact information. Um, There'd be no point on having your home phone number on the tag if you're out on the road. So put your cell phone or even your email address um, or, yeah, either your email, your cell phone. You could be phoned. You could be text, um, you know, just as long as that it's easy for people to contact you if they happen to find your animal. And sometimes pets need to be left in the RV when we're out for the day. And although we don't like it, um, the RV can get really hot in the summer or cold in the winter, most especially if you're not hooked up and you don't have air conditioning. So always make sure that you have fresh water available, have proper ventilation and a controlled temperature in your unit. Um, you know, another thing that's a real pet peeve for me, actually, pun on the pet, um, I hate it when dogs bark incessantly. Um, and I've been in a park where the people next door, they go away for the day and they leave their dog in their unit and the dog barks continuously. Um, and all of, the dog is obviously upset about being left behind, but the people around the unit um, are just as upset and annoyed and they worry about the dog, but they worry about the noise and such too. So if an animal does that, don't leave them behind.
you're just going to have to accommodate them and take them with you or leave someone with the animal. Um, have some little bit of consideration for the animal and for your neighbors. Uh, don't leave the animal chained or confined outside if you're away. Uh, if tethered outside, make sure they can't get tangled up um, in anything and out of the way of anyone walking past. Um, they will also need to have a chance to get out of the sun and harsh weather if necessary and have access to um, food and water. Okay, but I still I recommend that you do not leave your animal when you go away for the day and you know leave it chained up I mean. So pet etiquette. Now not everyone thinks that your animal is as, is as cute as you do and not everyone likes to hear the barking or noise that some dogs can create if they're not properly checked. Okay, just because you think uh, just because I thought Dexter was really cute doesn't mean everybody else did too. So have your pet on a leash at all times if you're outside with them. Um, just remember that the reason is because not everyone's an animal lover. So be careful when you're approaching other people and make sure they're comfortable uh, being near your pet before you get too close. So step back a little bit if you see someone approaching. Hold on to your dog and make sure the person is comfortable. One thing that really bothers me and it, I incessantly am complaining about it is clean up after your animal. Okay, unfortunately that just happens to be part of a pet owner's job and no one wants to step in your animal waste when they're out enjoying the um, outdoors. Okay, and this is the reason why sometimes we're not allowed to bring pets into campgrounds and it's because of um, pet owners who are not being considerate and you know it more and more people are being told that they have to leave their pets behind and what a shame I love traveling with um, Dexter and I think everyone else does too and for the most part we're all very conscientious pet owners but there are people that aren't the other thing don't let your bark uh, dog bark unnecessarily and if using the laundromat, this is another thing, and I've run into this myself. If you're using the laundromat to wash the animal's bedding, when you're finished, make sure the tub is cleaned and thoroughly cleaned, washed out, rinsed out, okay? There's nothing worse than placing clothes in a washer and they come out covered in animal hair. I washed my clothes in the laundromat once after a woman who owned a cat. Unfortunately, she wasn't aware of it, but everything she owned was covered in cat hair. And when my clothes came out of the washer after using, after using it after she did, they were covered in cat hair too. I wasn't really happy about it, but she was so sweet. I didn't want to hurt her feelings, so I never said anything. But I'm much more cautious now. If you are using um, the laundromat for your beds or your animals bedding and such like that, then maybe do a second wash through just with clear water. Um, just being considerate for everybody, okay? So there's things that you need to bring uh, for your pet safety. Medical information such as inoculation records. Make sure their re rabies or sh uh, shots are up to date. Have a record of them. Um, have your vet's emergency contact information. If you're a thousand miles away and something goes wrong with your pet, and you have to take it to a vet. Um, it's nice to have the medical records or your home vet available. Any medicines that your pet needs or prescription renewal uh, in case it gets lost or destroyed, make sure you bring that with you. Medicines for emergencies uh, such as ticks or fleas. You know, it doesn't hurt to have something like that in your unit. Make sure you have a leash, a collar, and a tether. Um, a crate or a kennel, or in my case, a harness, food dish, uh, food dish, water bowl, travel water bowl, food. Now, it's not always possible to purchase your pet's favorite food in other locations. Uh, bring a good supply. Now, if you're crossing an international border, such as between Canada and U.S., and you're bringing dog food, that's perfectly fine. 
but it must be in its original container. So be aware of that if you happen to be traveling uh, internationally. Bring some waste bags uh, to clean up after your pet. Um, they're real easy. You can usually just tie them to the um, handle of the leash or there's a little container that um, attaches to it so you can carry it with you. Um, bring your dog's favorite toys and a sleeping pad and treats. Uh, grooming tools, brush, shampoo, all of that, you're going to need it. You know, the best thing to do is prevent problems before they happen. And when you're making campground reservation, make sure it's pet friendly and let them know you have an animal traveling with you. You know, it, there's nothing worse than arriving at the end of a, a long day of traveling, getting into your campground, looking forward to getting set up, and then finding out it's not, um, they don't allow pets. So make sure you check ahead of time. Um, make sure you bring along an emergency first aid for your, specifically for the animal, okay? And have a color photo of your pet just in case it gets lost, okay? You'll want to put up posters and accidents happen. It's not always possible to completely avoid them, but by being prepared and aware of the potential dangers, it's possible to prevent them from happening, at least for the most part, okay? Uh, a, safe, half, <laughs> a safe, healthy, and happy pet makes traveling with your, tra your family pet that much easier for everybody. So really consider pet safety. It's uh, always important and it's easy to do. Thanks. Once again, it's Caroline Quabell with RoamingRV.com and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.